So I've got another story of some more dumb shit some Americans have genuinely said to me. How do British people expect me to go to your country and not do the accent? What's tootin' guys, the summer is almost upon us, which means that us American tourists will be unleashed upon the world like a swarm of locusts. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're pretty much gonna be annoying the shit out of everybody, and the world will hate us once again, which is great. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that American tourists don't have a great reputation worldwide. We're right up there on the list of most annoying tourists, right up there with the Chinese. They f <laughs> yes, for some reason. Um, but we're gonna be reacting to some funny TikToks about dumb and awful American tourists. Some of it's gonna make you cringe, some of it's gonna make you want to look away because it's gonna trigger you and make you realize just how awful you really are as a tourist, okay? Because you know what? We're not all innocent here today. The stereotype must start somewhere, and I think it starts with you and me, my friends. Oh my god, can you believe it? We're in London. Everything here is so cute. Oh my god, a pub. And I'm on like a pint. I'm kidding. Too far. Oh my god, a telephone box. Hello, can I talk to the queen? <laughs> Another pub. Ah, oh, the face is just cocking. And I can't, I can't do the accent. I just can't. <laughs> the cobblestone. Cobble. Should I do it? I'm gonna do it. Harry Potter, the boy who lived, <laughs> come to die. No, Potter, can you stop? Kennedy. <laughs> Everyone here is so quiet. God, they all look so like put together here. Like, <laughs> Buckingham Palace is so gorgeous. Okay, so the flag is not raised, which means the queen is not there. She's not home having tea. <laughs> is that Kate Middleton? Hey, hurry up, we're gonna miss the tube. I love you guys. I can't believe we're doing this. Ah! <sighs> As somebody who was recently in London, I'm embarrassed to say that yes. That is like a slightly elevated version of how I acted. We're gonna move on from that. Some things Americans have said to me. I've got another story of some more dumb shit some Americans have genuinely said to me. So I'm on a plane right with my mum. It's about 14 years old. You were on a plane with, I'm sorry, okay. You see, it's hard not to, okay? How do you, how do British people expect me to go to your country and not do the accent? Just can't help myself. I was coming back from LA and um, there was this couple, American couple on the flight and they're sitting like like in the seats next to us in the four seat, right? So, you know, we're being all nice and we're going, oh yeah, so what you guys plan on doing while you're in England? I could not believe my ears when I heard what they said next. They told me that they're hoping to see the whole of Britain in two days. <laughs> two <laughs> days! Are you stupid? So we thought that we would start off in London and then we would head up to Manchester, back down to Wales, and then up to Scotland. <gasps> this is the problem. Like, why? Americans need to learn geography, man. I know we're smaller than a lot of your states in your country, yeah? But use your brain for once. Can you travel around the whole of Michigan and see everything you want with a substantial amount in two days? No. If you do a lot of drugs and drink a lot of Red Bull, you can, okay? God, you know what? I think this guy is just really underestimating the strength and fortitude of Americans. If we really set our mind to it, we could do anything. We are the greatest country in the world. Mm. Oh. I think he's just hating. I think this mother, daughter, son, whatever the hell duo, they really were gonna see the whole entire country of England in two days. And I want an update. Did they? Because that's some Guinness Book of World Here are the shit. biggest tourist tellers for Americans visiting Europe. So having lived seven years in France, I have learned what not to do and what to do in the streets so that people know or don't that you come from there or not. Ooh. So I always used to walk around with like leggings and like a shirt. Know that in Europe, you're not gonna be wearing athletic clothes if it's not to go actually do sports. Okay. I have heard this and I know this. I also grew up in Europe, fun fact. About five, six years of my life were spent growing up in Czech Republic. And I do know that if you go out in leggings or any kind of athleisure wear, you're gonna get some real dirty looks. 
Also, when us Americans speak English, especially in public places like a restaurant, we don't realize it, but we usually talk a lot louder than the rest of the crowd. Yeah. So if you go all out with the fanny pack and the cargo shorts and the polo, know that that is like the biggest teller. If you do want to have a fanny pack, because they are awesome, wear them like this, like sideways and not around your waist, because in Europe, everyone wears them like that. So if you're traveling with a teen or you're still stuck in 2013, don't wear these. Nobody wears these over there. Also, no. That, 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 that's all I need to say. No. Really? Also, of course I don't know about that. I have a French boyfriend and he loves Birkenstock sandals. So something tells me that this isn't 100% true. Of course, it's normal for you to be happy while you're visiting the city, but that overexcitement will actually make scammers spot you out easier. Mm. Follow for more travel tips. Okay, you know what? I really like her TikTok video because I feel like her purpose of making that video wasn't to make fun of American tourists, but it was to educate them to not stand out so you don't get robbed, which, you know, I like that. Why do American tourists have such a terrible reputation abroad? I'm sure you're all very aware of the stereotype of the Americans that don't learn worldwide geography nearly enough mm -hmm. during basic schooling. That is true to some extent, but this goes far beyond that. Let's do a story time. I lived in France for a little bit more than nine years, traveled to quite a few different European countries, and almost every American tourist that I met while I was there was trying to go above and beyond and be extra polite and make an extra effort, even if they were using Google Translate, to speak the language because they didn't want to push that stereotype or fall into the stereotype of the rude American. There were a few notable exceptions, but you have buttheads and idiots in every single country. There's not a single country where everybody is just super polite and super cool. But one day I was in a little cafe in Montpellier and I overheard this couple that was speaking in English to the restaurant. I assume he was the manager or some sort of assistant clerk, something important. He was talking to them at the cash register, trying to explain things to them. They were refusing to try to speak French. I am a French. You say you're French? We. Oui. We? Oui. No, we are not French. We're American. She even, the manager offered to get out Google Translate, and they're like, no, 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 speak English. And they were forcing English on this guy, right? And so the manager, I can tell, is getting a little bit frustrated. This couple is being incredibly rude. Incredibly rude. And I hear the manager tell his uh, other work colleague, like, oh my gosh, these stupid Americans, they're so rude, they won't even try to speak French, and he was totally, totally crapping all over Americans and American culture. But this couple was not American. They were Finnish. They were talking about their flight back to Helsinki. I heard them talking earlier. They were 100% very much Finnish. They had a pretty strong accent while they were speaking English to this French manager. But because the French manager didn't speak well, all he heard was people, an English speaking couple that was really rude. And so he assumed they were American. That happened to me once. And I thought that was like, mm, like an uncool coincidence. But it was a pattern that kept happening over and over. I saw this happen multiple times while I was on business trips up to Paris. As soon as the English speaking person was refusing to speak French in France, or as soon as they were being nasty or rude, the French people around them would be like, oh, les Américains. And it was not Americans. Like, one guy had a very clearly Scottish accent. Bonjour! That was so thick, I, as an American, was having a hard time understanding him. My theory is that, well, yes, there are absolutely Americans that go wrong, who think they are just the center of the universe, and that everybody should bow down to them, and they don't make any effort to assimilate to the culture where they're staying, but also because English is so widely spoken, and it's kind of become a almost universal tourist language, we get also all of the reputations from the other jerks from other countries piled on top. Oh my god. Conspiracy theory. Damn. Okay. So I do kind of agree with that. I think that so many Americans have become so hyper aware of this bad stereotype that we have like as being bad tourists that we now are so vigilant in being good tourists. What the hell? I feel like there needs to be like a documentary made about this or like an expose. That just blew my mind. I feel like maybe this whole entire time American tourists have just been getting a bad rap, but maybe it's the Finnish people from Helsinki who've been raising hell. That actually makes so much sense. Ooh. <laughs> 
about that mouth. <laughs> that big mouth. Okay, say what you want though. Maybe American tourists aren't as rude or as difficult as they were previously thought to be, but there is one thing that is for sure, and that is Americans are so fing loud. I know I'm loud as hell, and it's embarrassing. I feel so bad for my French boyfriend when I go out with him and I catch myself being loud, and I see him like looking around, like, shut up, Stephanie, you're being so fucking loud right now. And I see people looking at me, and I know I've been just, I've been just talking about some sexy stuff or something weird or embarrassing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God, I'm being, I'm being that American right now. This is, this is awful. This is humiliating. He's probably like, I wish I wasn't dating an American right now. She's being so dramatic with the, with the hands everywhere. Oh my God. Like, why couldn't I have been more like the Czech side of my family? Like, why did I have to assimilate more with the American side of my family and be this like really dramatic, annoying, loud person? But I also love that side of me. So deal with it. <sighs> but I'm learning, I'm learning. Like the next time I travel in Europe, I'm gonna have like a little voice meter. And if it goes above a certain decibel, it's gonna shock me, it's gonna like electrocute me, so. <gasps> the best one I've heard was the American tourists complaining that they built Edinburgh Castle so far from the train station. Yes, how fucking dare these people back in the day just how dare they inconvenience us before they even had invented trains and modern technology. <gasps> I once got told by an American tourist that I spoke English quite well. I'm English and this was in England. Did you guys know though that like England wasn't actually where the English language originated from? I think it was like Germany or something. Let's Google it. Where does the English language come from? England. Okay. Are we sure? But it's derived from, it's a Germanic language. It's a Germanic language though. So technically it's from Germany. Am I right? No, I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna get canceled or like I'm gonna just be, I think I'm gonna get made fun of right there for, for that little bit of stupidity. Once in the airport coming back to Australia, where I'm from, in the middle of summer, I saw a dad and his two children wearing full winter coats. The dad said to the both of them, try to stay warm, it's gonna be cold outside. Bless their hearts. They'll have the coats for, to sleep on, in case they get locked out of their hotel room or something. I'm trying to look on the bright side here, but there really is no bright side, they're just really Dumb. What it must feel like to be a kid relying so heavily on your parents to be your source of knowledge, protection, love, and then they really just let you down like that. <laughs> and you show up after a 16 hour flight or whatever in Australia with a winter coat and it's blistering hot as outside and you're like, dad, you're supposed to be smart. You're supposed to know shit. And I'm, and I'm cooking in this puffer jacket. Dad. <laughs> South African here. Americans tend to have this habit where they'll climb out of their vehicle in the middle of a game reserve, get attacked by a wild animal because they wanted to get closer or try to pet it, and then cry about it. I thought people that come from the country that has grizzly bears and mountain lions would be a bit more cautious around wild animals. Also, the shock they experience when they realize there are cities here and not everyone is living in mud huts. <sighs> I think that we, we as Americans have this like urge to just take like little sticks and like want to just go poke it. <laughs> you know, just to get out and, and investigate. I think it's inner DNA. It's this exploration DNA thing. We, you know, we're, we're descendants of Christopher Columbus. We have that in our in our DNA. We just, we wanna go explore. We wanna see the great beyond. We wanna shit up and pillage and take over things that aren't ours. As a person from Switzerland, I get asked if I can speak Swedish on the internet. <laughs> 
And when I say I'm not from Sweden, they ask if I can speak Swiss. Okay, well then, you know, I understand the confusion. But fun fact, if you guys don't know, Switzerland has two official, well, no, actually, I think it has three official languages, doesn't it? Oh God, we're gonna have to Google this again, but I know they speak German and I know they speak French. It's split in two. But I think there's also a third language. How many languages in Switzerland? Four! Jesus! Four! German, French, Italian, and Romance. God! Well, you know what? I was closer with three. So many languages for such a little country. But the Swedish thing, you know, I get it though. The SW, that's gonna throw people off. I really think that our country is really, it's failing our youngins. We need to, we need to invest more money into our geography program. American tourists, you're not all bad. And I think that as long as we are doing our best every day and trying to be better, that's all that matters. And that's what really counts. Do your best. So when you get out there this summer, you just try to be the best tourist you can be. And just, you know, try to just be a little bit quieter. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you didn't take it too seriously. Hope you didn't get too butt hurt. And if you liked it, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel because I post new videos every single day. So I hope I see you back here tomorrow because I get so lonesome here on my channel. And I don't really have any friends. So if you don't have any friends and you want to be my friend, please come join me and keep me company here on my channel. In the meantime, also go check out my socials and all my other links will be down below. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.